Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga. My name is Liam and what are your thoughts on Coriander? Me personally, I quite like it. But today we're here to examine the age old question of who would win the fighting? Three men wielding mutant ant monsters or one times clown boy? It's not quite as simple to determine as you may think. And in the interest of fairness, today's examination is not going to be whether Hisoka could defeat all of the Royal Guard. No, no, he would get utterly destroyed. Although to be fair, he'd probably die in bliss whilst doing so. So, with his uh, raging clown unit. But to make this video well worth making, we're going to be asking whether Hisoka can defeat any of the Royal Guard one on one. And I know there are gonna be some, <laughs> there are gonna be a lot of strong opinions on this, but don't worry because this video is not just going to be the opinion of a dude in a room. It will in fact involve the opinions of thousands of dudes in thousands of rooms because I put up a channel wide poll asking for your opinion on the matter, which we will be consulting regularly throughout the video. What I'll also say is don't underestimate Hisoka. Of every character in Hunter Hunter, he is the one who is always most likely to surprise you. But it's all going to begin with a quick round of Pentagon, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. Gone for reasons has made another stupid Nen Val, which has transformed him into a rudimentary shape. And it's going to be your job to guess which shape that is. Should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to form a Nen Val by subscribing to the New World Review, which will also result in consistent injections of Hunter-based culture administered directly into your YouTube feed. And if if you are correct, then you shall receive a gold star on your hunter license. But which gone shape will it be? Shape one, two, or the third one? Make your choice now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it was the square. So if you guessed incorrectly, then you know the thing to do and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of our association. Welcome. All right, let's clarify some stuff. I'll admit that this may be a bit of an uphill battle for our classy clown on almost every front because even one-on-one, -on -one, the Royal Guard are nigh on insurmountable opponents, which also has the result of granting Hisoka a nigh on insurmountable erection. But to make things as fair as possible, we will be using post-mortem Hisoka, our most recent incarnation following his battle with Krolo in Heaven's Arena. And if you're not aware of his new capabilities, essentially he can now regenerate lost body parts by crafting them with bungee gum, and he can even use texture surprise to make them look real and well, just non, not, non, what? Let's try that again. And he can also use texture surprise to make them look real and non gummy. But it's not just about strict regeneration because these new body parts end up being superior in every way to Hisoka's old fleshy vessel. Because all of his prosthetics now wield the properties of both rubber and gum, giving his Soka a whole new world of versatility and sheer trickery to deal with. But, and this, this is the most important part. After having engaged in post-mortem Nen, Hisoka is now just plain stronger. His aura has been significantly boosted and the mental achievement of essentially having conquered death plays a large factor as well. Due to that whole thing where Nen is intrinsically linked to mentality and desire. The stronger the desire, the higher the output which also applies to our Royal Guard. One of the heavily underrated reasons why they're so powerful is because of their primal need to protect the king, which means that even though their theoretical of knowledge of Nen contains massive gaps, perhaps chasms, maybe even full on black holes, they can still wield aura to an above world-class standard through raw instinct and desire alone. Meanwhile, Hisoka's greatest advantage going into this context is his knowledge of the art form. To the best of our knowledge, he has no formal training, but Hisoka is a student of the hard streets of of Nen. He's well and truly up there with the likes of Karapika and Krolo, which is great because if he wasn't, uh, the video would end probably about now. But he isn't, and it's not. So instead of ending, let's beginning. And Hisoka's first ant-based opponent will be Menthuthuyupi, who I think is a great candidate to start with because he is a pretty simple guy. He has lots of power coupled with minimal brain function, and on paper, he's a pretty great opponent for someone like Hisoka to take on. However, something we do need to note about Yupi is that he is one of, if not the only rare chimera ant who doesn't contain a single shred of human DNA. Yupi was conjured into existence via the consumption of magical beasts. So while he may be a bit dim when it comes to human communication and customs, this lack of humanity gives him a tremendous advantage in combat because he gets to abandon his mind and let instinct take the wheel. And that worked really well for Goku in a series that is not Hunter Hunter. So let's come up with a better example, actually. Killua's Godspeed is a good example of raw instinct taking over. Killua basically programs his Nen to bypass the nervous system and respond to any stimuli with, well, Godspeed. And while Yuppie's nature is obviously inferior to 
to this particular ability, that's the way you need to think about him. He isn't bound by human thinking, so he's able to act much quicker than those who take even a fraction of a second longer to consider implementing some sort of strategy. Now with that said, that also leaves Yuppie quite vulnerable to someone like Hisoka. Because while his movements will take comparatively longer to complete, humans generally tend to outplay the primal instincts of animals. And a character like Hisoka is honestly Yuppie's worst nightmare. Because forgetting whether or not he can win for a second, Hisoka would just be phenomenally frustrating for Yuppie to deal with. Yuppie has never had to deal with a genius level Nen combatant in full force. The closest he would have come would be against Moral, who was missing his pipe at the time, and let's be real, even if he had it, his aura was far too depleted by that point to be any real threat. And very problematically, we can't rely on Yuppie getting in a lucky hit for victory either. Because let's say that a tentacle or even tentacles hit Hisoka and manages to take off an arm or something. Well, in that case, Hisoka just regenerates a more powerful and much more annoying arm to take its place. But again, on the flip side of that, Yuppie has pretty much the same advantage. Because even if Hisoka can pull some bungee gum shenaniganry to disable parts of Yuppie, well, he can just morph his body to however he needs it to be. Grow extra arms, legs, wings, eyes, maybe even heads. So we end up with two competitors who, who effectively can't hurt each other. I mean, one can hurt the other significantly more, I, I suppose. And I think that the association has the right idea with this matchup because when this was put to a poll, Yuppie came out on top with over 57% of the vote. But Hisoka did come a lot closer than I thought he might, taking 33% and even 9% of voters thinking that this would end in a tie. That or being too lazy to, to think about who would win. The problem is the fight does become a stalemate for quite some time, which means that it turns into a battle of pure attrition. And in that scenario, I just don't see a path to victory for Hisoka. Yuppie is just better built for a contest of endurance because even in a post-mortem world, Yuppie's aura quantity is just insanely larger. And the more aura one has, the more you can regenerate, which will likely result in Hisoka running dry first. So it's unfortunate, but I think this opening round is going to go to the Royal Guard. So next up into the Bungie Arena will be Nefapito. And this, uh, this is going to be probably controversial, but I think that Hisoka stands a much better chance against Pito than he does against Yupi. Pito kind of has the worst of both worlds going on. Firstly, because unlike Yupi, Pito cannot regenerate damage. I mean, that, that's not true actually, they can, but it takes invoking Dr. Blythe in order to do so. And when Dr. Blythe is active, it makes Pito stationary and stops them from using Nen altogether, both basic invocations and Nen abilities. So Pito's form of healing is rather ironically a death sentence in this kind of matchup. So I guess what I'm getting at is that if Hisoka can land a devastating blow, then this fight is as good as his. The big question is can, and if so, how does he go about accomplishing that? A big factor that Pito has going for them that Yuppie did not is speed. Pito is certainly the fastest of the Royal Guard, but also not impossibly fast. High level combatants can respond to Pito as proven by Kite when he was able to react quickly enough to save Gon. And Gon, sadly correct, noted afterwards that Kite would not have lost his arm if he did not have two children to protect. So it's not like Hisoka would be instantly obliterated by sheer speed alone, it's definitely manageable at his level even if he can't exactly match it. One of Pito's bigger problems, however, is that in addition to Dr. Blythe, their other Nen abilities are also pretty much dead weight in this fight. Puppeteering, for example, is pretty much entirely useless. Even if Pito is prepared with some sort of undead puppet army, they are notoriously low quality and very simply programmed. Plus, Pito can't even use it on Hisoka himself because it only works on dead bodies. However, this does leave us with Terp's core, which is actually quite useful as it buffs up Pito's already crazy physical abilities. And that's what this fight will probably come down to, a physical brawl, and that is very much Hisoka's home field. Because the biggest issue for Pito is their inexperience with Nen. Pito's abilities do not accurately reflect their almost godlike aura quantity. The abilities are poorly constructed and based on whimsical desires rather rather than raw need, with the exception of Terp's core, which was developed to help protect the king, and thus why it's the only truly useful one. But Pito runs on this like weird blend of animal instinct and human strategy. However, neither of them are particularly polished. Pito's instinct has repeatedly led them into traps set by strategic masters, whilst Pito's strategy was also woefully insufficient against world-class opponents. All Hisoka needs to do is land one fatal hit, which can come in many forms, or perhaps even disable Pito's limbs with bungee gum. Meanwhile, Pito's task is 
much more difficult because landing fatal blows on Hisoka with his post-mortem regeneration is a very tough ask. And I know that you're all going to hate this, but I'm going to be a brave man and state my opinion on the internet because I think that Hisoka can do it. And the reason why I know you're all going to hate my conclusion is that in the poll we conducted, over 71% of all association members gave this fight to Pito, which is an absolute landslide. And I get where you're all coming from. I just, I think that this is a surprisingly bad match for Pito. Pito's nen abilities are next to useless, their speed is manageable, their damage is negatable. Meanwhile, Hisoka is smarter. Right now, he's weirdly more durable and all he needs is one opening to hit a win condition. So fire away in the comments because I am giving this round to the clown. Which means that we are in a 1-1 situation with everything to play for in our final match against Shia Poof. And I think that Poof is generally the most underestimated of all of the Royal Guard. And that's probably probably because he's never actually had a proper fight. There was a skirmish here and there, but Poof's clowning legacy in Hunter x Hunter is that he managed to avoid a lot of violence in an arc filled almost exclusively with nonstop violence. That doesn't make him any less formidable though. In fact, speaking strictly mentally, Poof would be by far Hisoka's toughest opponent because Poof is something of a genius prodigy. He thinks not only about physical strategy, but also deeply analyzes the psychology of his opponents, which is significantly enhanced by his spiritual message Hatsu. He's someone who much like Krolo would be able to break down everything that is Hisoka and make him much more predictable. But the real clincher here is that even if Hisoka can prevail in the mental struggle, I still don't think he has any actual win condition. Shiapoof's greatest strength in this matchup is his effective invulnerability. In fact, for Hisoka, Poof's abilities are even more challenging to deal with than Yupi's body morphing and regeneration. Because should Hisoka manage to hit or even capture Poof in a bungee gum trap, then all Poof needs to do is use Bills about to split into thousands of nanopoofs, and Hisoka really has no way of dealing with them. In order to snuff out all of these little dude bros, you'd need a more area of effect style of attack, like Killua's electricity, for example. However, Hisoka, well, he's not an AoE kind of guy. He's definitely geared towards one-on-one -on -one combat because that's what interests him. At the same time though, Poof kind of demonstrably lacks the ability to harm Hisoka, like at all. Weirdly enough, we never actually got to see any offensive action from Poof, so it's hard to judge how well he could damage Hisoka. But again, even if he does that, their bungee gum is going to easily regenerate our magicians. It's a really odd fight to think about. In the end, my prediction is that Hisoka would become flaccid and lose interest in Poof because he's just not an interesting opponent. Poof doesn't really want to fight either, nor his ability is geared to do so. And it seems more likely that Hisoka would just wander off elsewhere to seek a new thrill rather than try to pursue this. So personally, I think this fight would be a bit of an anticlimactic stalemate. However, you will think quite differently. Because for the first and only time in this poll, the association has deemed that Hisoka would be victorious against a Royal Guard member with over 47% of the vote. It was quite tight when compared to Yuppie and Pito, but an intriguing result nonetheless. And maybe it could happen. Very maybe, but Hisoka, I, I just can't see him ever being able to truly defeat Poof. Which from my perspective leads us with a 1-1-1. The Royal Guards win with Yupi, they lose with Pito, and conduct a bit of a pointless exercise with Poof, leading to a really sad draw. However, according to the New World Association, the Royal Guard would have won, with both Yupi and Pito emerging victorious, whilst Poof is sadly defeated. Just as you should sadly defeat this next video by watching it, because there's always more to learn, explore, and experience with this wonderful series, so I look forward to seeing you there.